Okay, so today we're going to deal with filling in some really big holes in some plaster work. So this is going to be a, a brick wall that's got bonding on it, then a very thin skim of finishing plaster. And I'll show you the extent of the damage and then how we're going to fix it. And it'll be nice and easy. Okay, so in this situation here, I've got a, uh, an old uh, radiator cover. Let's get that out of the way. And it's going to reveal a radiator that's um, no longer in use. And although it's got the pipework there, the pipework's been disconnected from the system, so uh, it just needs removing and um, the wall behind it making good. Okay, so a bit of context. This radiator itself is physically fine and there's nothing wrong with it. The issue is, is that the pipework itself is just copper pipe buried in cement in the floor. And over time it's gonna it's gonna start degrading as it corrodes and various different things go wrong. So rather than waiting for it to leak, um, we've just recited the radiator in the room and then Left that radiator cover in play just so that it looks tidy. But um, it's come to the point now where I'm going to get it off and get it all cleaned up. So uh, what I'm going to do is, is um, just make sure that there's no residual water knocking around in this radiator and that it's isolated off because last thing I want to be doing is spilling it everywhere. But yeah, that's isolated off and that is there. So let's get this off. What I'm going to attempt to do is just to simply lift the radiator off, place it down on the dust sheet, get a better grip of it, and get it out of the room. Now, um, these off. too bad at all. Let's bring you closer and you can have a little look at the, uh, the damage to the wall there. So I suspected it was going to be something similar to that because I've replaced some other ones in the house and it seems to be like that in every room. The radiator brackets are mounted flush with the wall yet at some point a large amount of chasing out has been done probably for an old radiator bracket or something else. Same again on this side here, I mean, just to give you an idea of the thickness, I mean, look at how much we're missing there. That's why I was saying you've got brickwork and then the thickness of this is built out with bonding plaster. Then you have a very final coat on the top, which is your finishing plaster. It's that nice smooth stuff there. So what we'll do is get this radiator out of the room, get them brackets off and uh, let's get on with it. Okay, let's get this uh, radiator bracket off and um, see the extent of it then. That's the right size. Okay, now um, this is really dry, so if you attempt to put any filler or plaster or anything on that, it's gonna um, it's gonna be a bit of a pickle. So um, to get it to stick, you'll find it'll just sort of, it might just peel off or... So, um, what I tend to do is give it a good prime first. Um, now, if you don't have any primer, you can just, you can just absolutely just saturate it with water in that cavity. Because all will happen is it'll just whip all the moisture straight out of um, whatever you put on there. So, myself personally, um, I just use this. This SBR, it's pretty multi-purpose, it strengthens, it, it um, makes things, can be used as a waterproofing, but in this case here, I'm just going to use it to prime, so that was the uh, that's the SBR um, compound there. And um, it's already pre-diluted, 
because uh, I'm near the end of the tub so I've mixed it up with some water as well so what we can do is just make sure that we're covered up on the floor so we don't end up all, all this over the tile floor so just get a get a brush and uh, give it a good slapping in there and that should do it uh, this is going to ruin your paintbrush so don't uh, don't use your one of your best ones this is just a uh, just bought a painter's pack and it comes with a few weird small size brushes that I'll never use. I, uh, so I'll just use them for this type of thing and then uh, more or less just free. Get out any of that debris that's loose as well because that's going to get in your, uh, in, in your way. Get that in there. Right, I'm going to give that five ten minutes to soak in and dry. I may even hit it again if it soaks in super super quick. Um, well, while we wait for that to dry, I'll um, I'll hit the other one. But you don't have to watch that. Okay, this is the product we're going to use to um, fill in the hole there, and it's just um, it's just bonding, and um, it comes in like a purpley pink bag. Um, if it comes in an orange bag, that's the very fine multi finish stuff. Uh, so that's not the stuff you want. You want the like the uh, the purple bag, the purple bag basically. But it says bonding on it anyway, and it will tell you how thick it can go in one coat. So this says uh, eleven millimeters. So that should be fine for what we've got going on there. It's, <coughs> it's there or there about that. So um, this isn't fine plastering. You're not going to be doing anything crazy. You're just going to be filling the gap. So you don't need much. You're just going to need a paddle mixer, something to mechanically mix this when you add it to water inside your bucket. A, um, I just use a, a steel float and then something to scoop it out of the bucket. So. Okay, so I've mixed up some um, bonding plaster here and it's about the consistency of um, of say a uh, like a, a thick custard. Your uh, trowel should be able to stand up in it but it should be smooth enough that it can just move around nice and easy. You want no lumps in it. As I say, a mechanical whisk placed on the end of a drill, whisk it for a few minutes. It, it's that easy. It's, the instructions are on the bag as well. Much more easier when it goes uh, across it. So. And that's why it does sheet off as well because it's a pretty messy job when you're not doing it day in and day out. Just gonna check that's recording. Yeah. All I'm doing is just placing a big lump on there and then applying it to the wall and dragging it off at the same time. So on, drag it off. Scrape it off. Let it down. There we go, just as simple as that. I'll clean the edge of it up with a sponge to get the worst of it off, but... By gliding, by bridging the gap between two surfaces, like so, and roughly getting an average height from one side to the other, so 
I, I don't necessarily need to be super accurate about trying to level it off. I'll get it roughed on there, as I say, give all this excess, a little bit of a wipe down on the edge here, and um, I'll come back, give it, a, um, give it a light sand in a day's time, and um, that's simply be it. Once it's sanded, it'll be a case of priming it one more time, then a fine surface filler on the top. to get it um, nice and flush with the wall and nice and cleaned up. So what I'll do is, I'll move over, do the other one, and you can watch me do that. It's not hard, it's just flicking it on the wall really. The trick is, is making sure that the wall's damp so it doesn't just dry out straight away. Um, so scoop it on. If you just try and flick it in the middle, it'll roll back down, jam it to the edge, like that. And it'll, um, it, it'll key really well to the sides. Just like that. If you're finding it, it's, it's rolling out, it might be because um, maybe the next is just a smidge too runny. Or that the um, backing substrate is a little bit too um, too dry. Now, some plasterers will use PVA for doing it, but I've got that SBR. I've used it numerous times before, so stick to what you know, really. Okie dokie then. So that's on there. The good thing about um, bonding plaster is uh, it doesn't seem to crack. It, seems to um, it seems to just dry uniform it, it will suck back slightly as the moisture leaves um, the reason why we can't use this as the final finished coat um, you might be tempted to keep hitting it and hitting it you know trying to get it nice and smooth but um, the actual issue is the size of the aggregate that they use inside of the bonding the little small circles of sand and other items that build it up uh, they're not small enough to get a fine a fine finish from one place to another that's where you have to use a, a multi-purpose filler so uh, or if you're a plasterer you'd use a you'd use a finishing plaster but um yeah that's what we'll do is uh, let it dry off give it a sand and um, yeah that's it thanks very much okay so um, that's how you do some basic bonding as I say give it 24 hours 24 hours maybe 48 if it's quite thick let it dry out you'll see it's drying by the, um, the colour it'll go from like now it's quite a dark orange and almost a brown and it'll go to an almost um, like a pink when it's dry the pinky beige and uh, once it's at that point then then you can um, give it a little bit of a sand and prime it and then use a fine filler on the top and um, that will get that nice and smooth hope that helps